Welcome to Indian Anatomist. Individuals, who wants to perceive carrier in medicine, are welcome to check out, the YouTube channel, Indian Anatomist. Dear Medicos, Now I am going to teach you about the important nerve plexus, that supplying the upper limb or extremity, is brachial plexus. What is brachial plexus? How is it formed? Where is it located? What are the branches given by it? Where is it going to supply? And finally, what are its applied anatomy? So, be ready to learn about the objectives of brachial plexus. But, before knowing the brachial plexus, one should know about the spinal nerves. Spinal nerves are arisen from the spinal cord. They are irresponsible for conveying information in the form of nerve impulses between spinal cord and rest of the body. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves in humans, and they are divided into five types based on their position in the vertebral column. They are eight pairs of cervical spinal nerves, 12 pairs of thoracic, five pairs of lumbar, five pairs of sacral, and one pair of coccygeal spinal nerves. Each pair arises from one segment of spinal cord, so, the spinal cord has 31 spinal segments. This is the transverse section of spinal cord, is shown. Dear students, see the butterfly shaped gray matter surrounded by white matter, is visible in the spinal cord. Sensory neurons are in the dorsal or posterior gray horn, and motor neurons in the ventral or anterior gray horn. Anterior gray horn neurons gives anterior root of spinal nerve, and the posterior root reaches the posterior horn of spinal cord, because the sensory always comes from peripheral to spinal cord. So the anterior root is motor and posterior root is sensory. This pair, later forms the typical spinal nerves at, intervertebral foramen. Every spinal nerve is mixed variety. Following the intervertebral foramen, each spinal nerves, split into, anterior and posterior primary ramus, or rami. The anterior and posterior primary ramus serves, skin, muscle, and deeper structures of the body. Illustration depicting the, mid-thoracic segments of the spinal cord, in conjunction with the vertebral column. Dear students, this illustration, aims to discuss the emergence of spinal nerves, and their formation from the, spinal cord. With this brief introduction about spinal nerve formation, let us discuss about the brachial plexus. The anterior primary rami of spinal nerve C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1, a total of five nerves, join together to form the brachial plexus that extends from the neck to the shoulder. The brachial plexus provides nerve impulses to the skin, muscles and joints of the upper limb. The formation of the brachial plexus can vary slightly from person to person. The brachial plexus is made up of the roots of C5 to T1, which I already talked about. Occasionally, the brachial plexus normally gets aid from either the C4 spinal nerve or the T2 spinal nerve. The former type is called prefixed type of brachial plexus, whose root value is C4 to C8, less T1. In this type, the T1 spinal nerve doesn't play a big role. The incidence of prefixed type is 25% to 48%. The later type is called postfixed type of brachial plexus, and the root value is C6 to T2, less C5. Here, the C5 spinal nerve is not involved. The incidence of postfixed brachial plexus is just 2% to 4%. Brachial plexus begins at the neck, goes through the axilla, and goes all the way down the upper arm. Partially present, above and below the clavicle, which are called the supraclavicular and infraclavicular parts. It has five parts, from above downwards are, roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. Dear students, here is a mnemonic to remember the parts of brachial plexus. That is, Richard Taylor, drinks, cold beer. Each first letter showing the, parts of brachial plexus, they are, roots, trunks, divisions, cords and, branches.
The brachial plexus is formed by the anterior primary rami of C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. Dear Medicos, As a rule, the nerve plexus supplying limbs are always formed by the anterior primary ramus of spinal nerves. Roots of the brachial plexus forms three trunks are upper, middle, and lower trunks. The upper trunk is formed by the union of roots, C5 and C6. The middle trunk is formed by the continuation of root, C7 and. The lower trunk is formed by the union of roots, C8 and T1. Now, each trunk is divided into anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior divisions of upper and middle trunk are joined with each other, and forms the lateral cord. Whereas, the anterior division of lower trunk continues as medial cord. Dear students, now which divisions are left out? Yes, the three posterior divisions. Now, all these three posterior divisions, join together and forms, the posterior cord. Now coming to branches of the brachial plexus. The branches are classified into 1. Branches from roots 2. Branches from trunk and 3. Branches from cords First we will see the branches from the roots. 1. Dorsal scapular nerve, arises from lateral part of C5 root, that supplies the rhomboidus, and less supply to latissimus dorsi muscle. 2. Roots of C5, C6, and C7 gives the long thoracic nerve, that supplies the serratus anterior muscle. Now, branches from trunk. Only the upper trunk gives branches. They are, 1, suprascapular nerve that supplies the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. Number 2 is, nerve to subclavius, supplies the subclavius muscle. Next is branches from, cords. First we'll see about the lateral cord of brachial plexus. Lateral cord gives three branches, they arises from lateral to medial R, 1, lateral pectoral nerve, that supplies the both pectoralis minor and pectoralis major muscles. 2, musculocutaneous nerve, supplies the anterior compartment of arm muscles, that is coracobrachialis, biceps brachia, and brachialis. Then after, it continues as cutaneous, supplies the lateral skin of forearm. Finally 3, lateral root of median nerve, forms the median nerve proper, with, medial root of median nerve from, medial cord of brachial plexus. Now, branches from medial cord. Medial cord of brachial plexus gives, 5 branches, from medial to lateral R. 1, medial pectoral nerve, once again supplies the, pectoralis minor and major muscles. Students should understand at this juncture, that the pectoralis major and minor are, supplied by, both the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. 2. Medial cutaneous nerve of arm, supplies the medial skin of arm. 3. Medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, supplies the medial skin of forearm. Fourth one is, ulnar nerve most of the hand muscles and some of the forearm musculatures. Finally number 5 is, medial root of median nerve. This branch fuses with, lateral root of median nerve of lateral cord, thus forms the median nerve proper. How does the median nerve form? The median nerve is, formed by the union of lateral root of the median nerve from the lateral cord, and medial root of the median nerve from the, medial cord. Dear students, it is the time to discuss about the branches of posterior cord of brachial plexus. Like the medial cord, the posterior cord also gives five branches. Out of five, three branches arises from medial aspect, and the remaining two are considered as terminal branches. The branches are 1. Upper subscapular nerve, which supplies the upper part of subscapularis muscle. Two, thoracodorsal nerve, that supply the muscle, latissimus dorsi. 3. Lower subscapular nerve, supplies the lower part of subscapularis, and teres major muscles. Number 4 is, axillary nerve. This nerve winding around the surgical neck of humerus, and supplies the deltoid muscle and teres minor muscle. 
It also gives cutaneous branches to lateral side of arm. Finally number 5 is, radial nerve, the larger terminal branch of posterior cord of brachial plexus. This nerve supplies all the muscles of posterior compartments of arm and forearm muscles. Dear Medicos, You now understand the function of the three brachial plexus cords, and their associated branches. Let's hope communication goes smoothly. I have, but one question for you. Why do the, three brachial plexus cords, go by the names lateral, medial, and posterior? These three cords are related to axillary artery, that is, medial to it, lateral to it, and posterior to it, simple. Dear medicos, all the branches of brachial plexus were discussed. This topic is important for doctors and aspiring medical graduates. Without knowing the brachial plexus, it is not possible to treat the injuries of upper limb or extremities. Now, I'm going to end this lecture on the subject of the brachial plexus and its various components. I will talk about brachial plexus injuries in the next video, which is the most important part of reading about the brachial plexus. Hope you all enjoyed this session. Please watch further videos. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Good day all.